my name is Jay Hodges. I'm a friend of Sinn Féin, uh, and it is my pleasure to be able to have a Zoom meeting and a Zoom conversation with a great comrade and colleague, um, Karen Quinn. Karen, can you just do a brief introduction of who you are? Hello, oh, Jay. How's things? How's one of my one of my top ten favorite North American trade unionists? Uh -huh, I appreciate <laughs> that. I made the top ten. So yeah. Talking about Okay, you just shaved in, but you're there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, well, a bit about myself, I'm the North American representative for Sinn Féin, so I deal with uh, the political outreach for Sinn Féin across the US and Canada. I would be, I work directly with the friends of Sinn Féin, both in the States and in Canada. And uh, it is an exciting time to take on. America has always been central to the Republican project, to the Irish Republican project and the Irish unity. So it's an honor to take on this role. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've technically been in position since January and it's complete coincidence that it also, it also happens to be at the same time as the travel ban kicked in and I've been, I've been stuck in uh, Ireland. So that's, by, that's, by, that's more by coincidence, or Mary Lee McDonald kept on pointing out, it's just too much of a coincidence for our legend. Uh, so yeah, that's what the rule is. So I don't know why, Jay, you want to talk about a bit about my background? or I do, actually. I'd like to know kind of your upbringing and how you got involved. Did you grow up in a political family? Like, just kind of, of, of that stuff. Well, for people who don't know, Ari Saxons, I'm originally from Belfast, but I now live in what in Dublin. Uh, I, was, um, I was born in the, the end of the 60s. So most of my childhood was growing up in the 1970s in Belfast. And if you like more of my teenage years then were in the 80s in Belfast. And I suppose it was a very, it, it was a strange, it's, it's funny because it was very normal when I was growing up. It was very normal to the British Army in the streets. It was very normal to visit people in jail. It was very normal to be harassed by cops, uh, to be threatened by the RUC at the time when I was a, a teenager. And it's, it, it's almost that was just the background noise to your life there. And it's only later on that, you began to real, that I began to realize, one, that this isn't normal, and two, that there's a way to change it. Uh, and it was only recently, actually, when I began to reflect on it, there was a program here called Reeling in the Years. It's like an old news program, and they pick a year, and they okay. show footage from the year. And I said, and I have two daughters here in their early 20s, and I was sitting with my two daughters, and one of them says, it was a, 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 a thing from about 1984, and one of my daughters actually says, is that what it was really like growing up in Belfast? And I started explaining and what it was like in 1984 when I was finishing secondary school and being stopped by the British Army and I would have they offered a fight. But I always remember, that I was very tall, I was tall, I was about six foot one. And I was six foot one when I was about 15 and I must have weighed about nine stone. So <laughs> I was the guy that the British Army always picked on because I was the tallest of all my friends. And so that they would have offered you the fight. So I was explaining this and they were looking at me in complete horror about this experience. And it just dawned on me then that what had been completely normal for me growing up was absolutely abnormal, the Sally. Uh, so I grew up in West Belfast. I grew up in Anderson's town. Uh, my family history, I have a very marked family history that uh, the, a, a long list of from my great grandfather was an Irish volunteer who ended up fighting for the British Army in the First World War as a Redmanite. Uh, and came back, and since then I've had generations of Irish Republicans uh, in my family. Okay, outstanding. Now, you've worked for Sinn Féin though for for years. Like you, you know, your career has been with with Sinn Féin. Uh, how did you get started? And kind of take me through that uh, journey. Yeah, it was. Uh, I suppose with Sinn Féin, I started working when I was, I started. Is it, you come to you grew up in this environment. And you're left with two choices. You either accept it or you try to change it. And what I decided to do was to try to change it. And Sinn Féin was the vehicle for doing that. So uh, at the age of 18, or 19, I think it was, I was asked by a guy from the local area, which I lived in, a place called Riverdale, uh, would have come out and give Sinn Féin a hand canvas. And I was just, just, it wasn't really my cup of tea. I didn't want to do it. And what have you. 
and it was for a local councillor who was marching on Mullia, which some people in the States might know. And uh, so I worked on his, I ended up working on his campaign. But I, I mean, it was always there and it was always present. And I came from a Republican family and was involved in Republican politics all my life. But I, was, I suppose that's when I started thinking about activism. And I suppose, and you, you always find that there's one point where you, where you make a commitment. And for me, when I was in university, uh, and I, I, every Friday afternoon we'd meet, we'd meet and go for a drink. And there'd be a band playing in the student union. And there'd be a group of us, and some of them would have been mature students, and some of them had been ex-prisoners. And one of the people who would join our company, not that I knew her particularly well, was Maria Farrell. But she would just be on the company, you know, like the extended company and a bit of crack. And then Maria Farrell was killed by the British Army in Gibraltar. Yeah. And a couple of things happened. One was Queen's University decided that they weren't going to recognize her as a student. So like there's a really, just a, if a student dies on campus, who's on the campus, they put a wee card on the front door. They lower the flag to half mast and they refused to do that for Maria. So we had a series of protests in the university about it. Uh, and it was just shocking to find somebody who you knew, who you'd seen a couple of weeks previously had just been killed in these circumstances, had been executed in the street by the British army. And I suppose that was the point when I said, this is where I want to actually get involved and make a real change to be committed to I went to the funerals and there was a mill town whenever uh, Michael Stone attacked the funeral cortege. And this is, this is just how funny symmetry life was. That was the first time I ever met Martin McGuinness. And what happened was a guy had been shot close by us and Martin got us to organize to clear the way to get a car down to try to pick up this guy who'd been injured to bring him to hospital. And, and then years later, I would end up working with Martin McGuinness. I never thought it at that time when I was 19 or 20 that I would end up with working with Martin McGuinness. So I ended up finishing university, was working uh, as a volunteer with Sinn Féin doing election work, ended up involved in community work, uh, ended up meeting at the age of 21, meeting Jerry Adams and working on a project called the West Belfast Festival or Fail and Fubble as it's known now. Yeah. yeah, so I worked with Jerry and a very small team of us who ran it at, that, at the beginning of that and there was very little, there was absolutely no resources and in fact it was politically vetted so we had to beg, borrow and steal. So I was the chairperson of the festival for about 10 years. Uh, I was working in community organizations, doing community empowerment work, community organizing, uh, political, political work for Sinn Féin. And then in 1998, Jerry Adams asked me to come and work with him and immediately in the aftermath of signed the Good Friday Agreement. And from then, I've worked with Sinn Féin ever since, since 1990, 1998, in a series of different roles. And so you're just, in a, in a career standpoint, uh, you have been uh, with Martin McGuinness, you've you know, been with, with uh, Jerry Adams, like you've kind of been all around all that stuff. In your new role, uh, you take over for um, a living legend, if you will, uh, um, uh, a very, a very prominent member uh, of the Irish community, uh, Rita O'Hare. What has it been like taking over for Rita, uh, and just kind of how did that take place? Like, how did you guys work all that out and and make that transition? Well, I've I've had a, a number of jobs within Sinn Féin and Brace within Sinn Féin. Um, as I, said, I worked with Jerry Adams at the beginning. Uh, I worked with Jerry for a, a large number of years. Uh, I, came, I went to Dublin in two, mid 2000s and was involved in a reorganization project. I was the, the last order, really, the Assistant General Secretary of Sinn Féin for a couple of years. Uh, moved back to Belfast and worked with Martin McGuinness as a special advisor. Uh, and again, it's funny that having, I never thought when I was in this Milltown Cemetery that I would end up working with Martin McGuinness as a special advisor. And, I always remember going in to meet Martin for, for, to work with him. As I knew him, I had met with him, met with him before and worked with him. But I, when I went in to work as a spouse advisor, he laughed and he says, "You know, stick with me, and I'll take you places." <laughs> <laughs> and little did I know, I was basically signing away. I think about three and a half years of my life to be with Martin, 
and we did go to places. So we traveled the states extensively and met with uh, President Obama. I just missed meeting President Bush. Met with him and visited the White House on numerous occasions. Uh, came to, was asked to go down to the South to do some work. I came to the South and I ended up as in various positions, but I ended up as Director of Communications for Sinn Féin for about four or five years, which was quite an experience, uh, being head of our press and communications. And then when Mary Lou uh, was taking over as president, she asked me to help set up the organization around her, which I did do. And then she asked me to take on the role of uh, North American representative. I took it on. And probably that's a long way to get back to your question. The most, the, the scariest thing about taking on this brief was following Rita O'Hara. Rita O'Hara done the job for 20 years. And Rita O'Hara could be, had access, would know people in the White House, the State Department, the Congress. She knew people in communities. So she had built up over 20 years a huge network and political influence. So it's a bit daunting to take on that. And of course, Rita, in her own way, in her own personality, is a complete, not a whirlwind and a dynamo. I was with her today, and I just says I'd be speaking to you, so she was asking about you. Well, I, uh, I think anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge fan. Uh, and you, uh, to, to quote yourself, you know, those are, those are a lot of wee shoes that you got to fill uh, moving in for Rita. But uh, I'm apologizing. I, I didn't turn off my notifications. Uh, and it's still the middle of the work day for me right now. So I'm getting notified of stuff and I can't shut it off in the middle of this. Uh, You've just dropped out of the top 10 favorite. <laughs> genius. I'm not good at this. Uh, so uh, we're going <laughs> we're gonna to have to do this uh, the hard way. And I apologize. At, tell me about the organization of the history and, and what, the, you know, what really the Friends of Sinn Féin, like how it kind of got started, like, you know, what the initial goals are kind of of, of the involvement of the organization uh, and those kinds of things. Yeah, well, well, not want to go back into like a history lesson, but the, the involvement of Republicans in, and Irish Republicans in Irish America have been sent. Um, you go back 150 years ago after the Young Irelanders Revolution, uh, raising uh, the people who ended up in the state's legs of John Devoy, who ended up setting up the Fenians and the clan, and they were central to the Easter Raising, and they were centered the, the politics around the Easter Raising. And that's the reason I'd say is in the proclamation about our gallant, our exiled children in America. That's how crucial they were. They were part of the raising, even at the, the other side of the Atlantic. So Irish American in America has been hugely important for Irish Republicanism and for the struggle for unity. And right, bring that forward, where it's the hunger strikes, where it's the no raid, where it's the groups like the, the Red Branch out in San Francisco. There was always been an interest there in promoting Irish unity and the cause of Ireland and Irish interests. And I suppose that it, in the most modern form of it, in 1994, a group of Irish Americans uh, came together and they lobbied for a number of things. One of them was a visa for Jerry Adams. Within a couple of months of uh, within a couple of months of getting that visa, the peace process took off, and the IRA had a the IRA ceasefire took in. They also then they advocated for uh, special envoy, and George Mitchell landed, and we had the Good Friday Agreement. Now, in between that, 1984 and 1998, Friends of Sinn Féin was set up and was set up with people like Larry Downs and Sean Downs, with the, uh, Jerry Q, Faye Devlin, and it was with explicit role to promote Irish unity and to promote the cause of peace and promote Sinn Féin. Uh, so it's been going now for 25 years, just over 25 years, uh, and it has remained it's a vehicle for supporting Sinn Féin and the party at home, but it's also very much a vehicle for supporting the cause of Irish unity in the States. So Irish America is hugely important for Republicans. Irish America sometimes, I, I think, forgets the power that it has had and it's the history that it's had. And again, there wouldn't have been a rising without Irish America. There would not have been a Good Friday Agreement without Irish America. And I think that brings us on to the next bit about what the future holds. We can secure Irish unity, and Irish America needs to be part of that debate and discussion. That's we can we can finish the journey together. Now, uh, 
what's the best way for uh, Irish Americans to get involved, um, to stay informed, kind of, kind of uh, to, to take a part in that role? Well, part of the work I've been doing since coming on board, and it's been forced as well by COVID, and that is to try to enhance the Friends of Sinn Féin networks with social media and our, our Facebook, our Twitter accounts. We've set up a YouTube channel. We produce weekly newsletters. So the key bit is to get informed and to follow the social media platforms to sign up for our newsletter. And all of those can be got from www.friendsofshinfein and Facebook, it's Friends of Sinn Féin USA. So that, that's the key bit, but I think it's interesting where the discussions are. And it's almost like anything that we need to constantly renew, whether it's Sinn Féin and Republicanism in Ireland, we'll constantly renew. We need to constantly renew, and particularly in the States. So there's very practical steps. One is be informed and begin the debate about the opportunity that's in front of us. I mean, I listed from the Fenians right through to today, and people who, like I, when I was in the States uh, before Christmas, I had the pleasure of meeting a couple of people, and it was people whose grandparents and parents had been in jail in the States for Irish Republicanism. And though that net, yeah, and that, that network of that, that intergenerational love of Ireland, commitment to Irish unity is still there. And I think that we now have to, one of the key focuses for me and one I think one of the key opportunities is to bring the power that, of that very disparate group together to actually finish the deal. We had a, a we had a, a online conference with Jerry Adams and Joe Crowley a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, at, and it's still available on the YouTube channel if people want to go back. But Jerry Adams said something I just thought was really impressive. He says this generation of Irish Americans could be the, the generation which returns to a united, peaceful and prosperous Ireland. That's, that's the opportunity in front of us. Wow. Um, and that, that, that's part of the discussions about what has changed. Why, why are we moving from Irish unity is no longer about singing the songs in the pub or wrapping the flag around it, to becoming a very realizable and doable project. Um, and if you look back from 1998 to now, in the North, in the last five elections, the unionist majority is gone. The electoral majority is gone. So it's, Now explain just real briefly kind of what, what you're talking about there, um, just so people are aware. <laughs> Well, I mean, Ireland was partitioned and the border was imposed on Ireland on the basis that there would be in the north of Ireland, the, the northeast six counties, that there would be a perpetual unionist majority. So it would be, it was classed as a, a Protestant state for Protestant people. Uh, since the Good Friday Agreement, and when the Good Friday Agreement was signed, as part of that agreement, it provided for this. It provided for a referendum on Irish unity. So it commits the British and Irish government if the majority of people in the north want unity, that they will legislate and it will happen. Over that period, the, the unionist majority is now gone. So there's an assembly that sits in Belfast and Stormont. For, since the foundation of the state, that always had a unionist majority. That's no longer the case. In Westminster, there was always a majority of MPs who returned from the North would have been unionist. That is no longer the case. John Finucane won a seat in North Belfast for Sinn Féin. That seat was the seat of Edward Carson, who was the father of modern unionism. That had been a unionist seat since the foundation of the state. That is now gone. Belfast City Council, the capital for this unionist state, is now no longer a unionist majority town. So that the North has changed considerably, not just in terms of nationalism and unionism. It's a lot more progressive. There's a bigger gray area between the communities opening up. And I suppose the big thing in terms of the North is that no one can say that, there, that the people in the North now consent to the continued union. Our, the Good Friday Agreement says it's a very simple democratic way to resolve this, let the people have their say. So we think we can secure a unity referendum and we can win a unity referendum within the next five years and that would be the transition to United Ireland. In the South, Sinn Féin just had their, their greatest ever election result. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're the largest party in the 26 counties. We are by far the largest party across all of Ireland. Um, so there's a huge, and part of the discussion in the South was this idea about a new and united Ireland. 
So there's more and more people coming in the South. There's a vast majority. All Poland has around 70% parish unity in the, in the South. And in the North, it, it's, it's still that gray area about where, where it's there. But if a referendum was begun, if the debate was being had, and as I say, if there was a, a run into that discussion, we're confident that you can win the unity referendum in the North. And that's the challenge. The challenge is for Irish and Mary to get on board, to help secure a unity referendum, and to help us win a unity referendum. And then, Jay, you can come back to United and Prosperous Ireland, the way Jerry Adams said. I'm dying to. I'm dying to get back across the pond. Uh, now, I am a, you know, I, I like the, the social media stuff. I, I actually um, uh, follow several different uh, profile accounts and whatnot. Um, for Sinn Féin in particular, and, and also just individual people, like there is, but there are specific Friends of Sinn Féin accounts for Twitter and for um, Facebook and, and for those kinds of things. So where can people go to get locked into that stuff? If they, if they go to the Friends of Sinn Féin web page, there's a, there's a connect page on that. Are you, I mean, we're going to put this video out on our YouTube, uh, YouTube and Facebook channel. So we will have the connection pieces on all of the links to that. Perfect. I, and as you were saying about very practical things, I mean, I, as I say, there's the idea about having the discussion, getting it, being informed. Friends of Sinn Féin can provide the information. It's about having the discussion with your friends, with your family, with your community, with your, if it's an AOH or GAA committee, if it's with your political colleagues, if you're a Democrat or Republican. And it's just a very practical issue is developing, and that is we're in an election year in the, in the States. People are running for Congress. There's the Friends of Ireland group on, in Capitol Hill has been hugely important for safeguarding our peace agreements and dealing with progress and dealing with issues like Brexit. So like we would encourage people to contact, uh, contact their congressional candidates and ask them, will you join the Friends of Ireland group on Capitol Hill? It's a very easy ask. It's a very easy group to get involved. And it's a nonpartisan group. It, it's not a uh, link to any particular party. It's just a group. It's it's a, it's is it it's bipartisan so and it's open to all, uh, and the, the work that they have been doing like for a, a, an example of how important this group is, um, one of the biggest challenges we faced recently was Brexit. Brexit had the potential to bring that border back on the island and undermine the Good Friday Agreement. The British government were just going to go ahead and impose that without a card of what was actually happening in Ireland. Our friends in the Friends of Ireland group on Capitol Hill, people like Richie Neal, Elliot Engel, um, Peter King, Tom Swasey. Peter King and Tom Swasey brought a joint resolution to the Congress. And it was about safeguarding the Good Friday Agreement and making it clear that there'd be no future trade agreement with Britain if they undermined the Good Friday Agreement. And that focused the minds of Boris Johnson and the Tories and Westminster, and they conceded the protections for the Good Friday Agreement. I mean, it, the US, and particularly the Friends of Ireland, were central to doing that. When you have someone who's the chair of the Ways and Means Committee saying there will not be a trade, trade deal unless the Good Friday Agreement is protected, that is huge. And having, uh, having people here in the States contact local candidates and saying, you know, if you go into Congress, will you join this organization? Uh, it's a very simple thing. It's a very brief thing, um, but it actually has huge impacts uh, down the road for making sure that you know unification votes happen and, and those kinds of things are safeguarded. Yeah, and it, it's, it's crucial in the first instance to protect in the progress we have had. So the, the Friends of Ireland group have been central to protect in the Good Friday Agreement against challenges such as Brexit. But I mean, the unity referendum is as much part of the Good Friday Agreement as human rights, as the institutions in the North, as power sharing and equality. And so part of that is we want to see the full implementation of the Good Friday Agreement. And that means allowing the people to have their say on the future. A very simple ask. But keep it that, and one of the key blocks in that will be the Friends of Ireland group. Now, my last question for you is, what is the one recommendation you would make to comrades here in the States, uh, either um, it, it's a misconception or um, something that you would recommend that they take part in or learn. Uh, I ask this all the time of people and uh, um, I've had people tell me everything from, you know, you need to actually learn Irish, uh, learn the Irish language uh, or read, you know, these books or whatnot. Like what's your one recommendation uh, for people here in the States? 
Well, I always think you, you learn from your own experiences. So I think, first of all, if people have, you know, we find people of an interest of, in Ireland because of their Irish American connections. And I advise people to go back and look at that. Go back and look at the, where, where they're from. And go back and look at how they've ended up, why their people ended up in the States. The people ended up in the States because of issues like forced immigration of oppression. And I think it, it's that love of Ireland that we see manifested across the States, where it's in Irish culture, where it's in Irish music, where it's in issues like the AOH. Is it that you can actually, you can actually take that history and you can actually carve a new future. You could, you could be the generation, or we could be the generation that actually unites this country, that gets rid of the border, that has a free and independent Ireland. So the first piece for me is anybody's interest is look around, look at your background, look at your history. And if you want to know more about Ireland, follow the Friends of Sinn Féin uh, Facebook, sign up their newsletter. And but, so become aware, talk to your friends and family about it and then hopefully become an activist. And there's very, there's very easy asks, such as asking your Congress, Congress member, will they join the Friends of Ireland group? Uh, and just to stay engaged, this isn't something that's gonna be resolved today and tomorrow. We have let out, we believe that it can be done within the next five years. We've been at it for over 800. So like, we have time to get this, we have time to strategize and get this right. But we, we need to build the massive support. And the one thing about Irish unity is this, that is striking in Irish America, it is the one thing that unites everybody. It's all of the disparate elements of Irish America want to see Irish unity. And we're saying, here's how you can play your part in delivering it. That's, that's wonderful, man. Well, I thank you for your time today. I, I, I've had a lot of fun. I, you know, we talk all the time, but actually getting to hear kind of your story and, and, and those kinds of things are uh, actually, uh, really, really uh, beneficial to me. I, I enjoy that stuff. So yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit hurry, but you've now moved into the top seven. <laughs> <laughs> Back on top. Man, that's all, <laughs> <I do. laughs> all right, Jay. Yeah, yeah. Have a good night, man.